welcome to the next State for Play podcast, your first, only, greatest, best, last, desperate hope for talk about Japan and games and Japanese games and sometimes other things. I am, though, always your host, Mark Gaming Jesus McDonald. With me, uh, the fearsome foursome, eight foursome, something, yeah. or there's something there. We'll, something we'll like workshop that. it. Uh, let's see. Starting off uh, to my left, stage right, that is uh, Tina, GameCube, Uber, Alex, Roger. Z- Roger. Carter. There it is. <laughs> One of those two. <laughs> Mr. Carter, how are you doing? Why GameCube, Uber, Alex? Excuse me, Mark. On? Mr. Carter is my father. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny for people who know me in real life because he's a teacher. Mm. Yeah. Uh, do people... So he really is Mr. Carter. He, he genuinely is Mr. Carter, yeah. <laughs> he's got a horse shack and, a, and a, all that whole thing. So why uh, I, you, you told the story on Twitter. I'm going to make you tell it on the uh, podcast because it seemed like too good. I can't believe you saved it somehow until now. It's a cute story, right? It's a pretty so, good. It seems like a pretty good story. It's a... Uh, Paint a picture. It's the year of the release of the GameCube, which was 20 years ago. So you do the math. What year is it? I don't know. Um, at school, we have my class decides to have this speech contest within just like the class. So it's not really a big deal. Basically, it's just a you know language exercise. You try to write a, a good public speaking speech and be persuasive, and you know memorize it. Try not to look at the paper too much. So I did my speech on the air quotes console wars <laughs> and <laughs> how everyone else should just sit down and let Nintendo do what they do best. Wait, what which, grade did you say? Sorry, did you say what? how, how old you were? You were just 20 years ago. Well, okay. You don't want people to do the math. Whatever. I've already said how that. old I am on this podcast. I was, I think I was 12. Okay. All right. I, I just wanted to get a sense of, so like late grade school, middle school-ish. Yeah. Got it. And that wasn't exactly my actual personal opinion on the matter, but it's a lot more persuasive than, well, here's why all of them are kind of good, eh, whatever. So I have this speech about how Nintendo's awesome and everyone else should stop. (laughs) (laughs) So it was like, it was, what was the, give me the gist. I want to know the gist of that speech. Like, why was it a a persuasive argument? So I don't remember exact details, but... Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that my my layout for it was, you know, introduce the three major consoles at the time, mm-hmm. give a little bit of backstory on each of them. I remember that I included strong points for each one so that I wouldn't okay. be perceived as a bully because you can't just <laughs> shit on stuff. You have to, you know, mm-hmm. explain properly. And yeah. then I went into here's why Nintendo is not going to lose this race. They have been around for the longest. They are obviously the best because they make these games. <laughs> so you were you were arguing like this is what's going to happen, not hey, Sony and Microsoft should stop making their console because for some reason. Or yeah, whatever. it was mostly it was mostly like here are the three competitors, here are their strengths, here's why I don't think that the Xbox is sustainable as a brand. Twelve <laughs> <laughs> year old me, right? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows your shit? Um, here's why the PlayStation is cool, but it can't keep up with Nintendo for the following whatever twelve year old logic reasons are. Yeah, but okay. I do remember that my closing art because you have to have like a nice closing mm, line, right? right? Mm-hmm. Uh, my closing line and. Bear in mind, this speech was in French because I went to French school. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, you buried the lead there. Wait. Sacre bleu. I got to rejigger my whole imagination of this entire. All right. So imagine this kid talking in like full on fluent <laughs> French, saying words like Xbox and Sony PlayStation in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, so then my closing <laughs> argument was the word Nintendo in Japanese means leave it to the masters. <laughs> And personally, I believe we should. Oh! Okay. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
you very much. So you're supposed to let the lone clap happen for a little longer before everybody else joined in. <laughs> My God, were there people must have been like in tears, I would imagine. Well, maybe not for the reasons you're imagining, because it was a big fucking dork, but I won the contest. Mine was the best in the class. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty that says something like it must have been a pretty good speech or it was well you know. researched it was well presented i'm a good public speaker it went okay hmm. so because i won my class i got to go to the like citywide speech contest you know multiple schools at like city hall or some shit yeah and i wasn't really super nervous about it because like i was like i already know this thing inside and back like it's fine i just go up there and tell a bunch of grown-ups what i think and then sit down again it's fine until the other kids started, because I was like in the middle. How big is that? Uh, so is that like a, lo- a local gymnasium or like how big an audience yeah. are we talking regionals? about? Regionals? What are we talking about? In my head, it was a big room full of adults. Mm-hmm. Probably it was like a banquet hall at a hotel where like people have weddings. You know, like okay. it wasn't that. Okay. I don't think it was that big. But I mean, it was a, a, yeah, don't it sell like it a short. government that's, building. That's decent. Okay. Yeah, got it. All right. Different from, you know, talking in front of like 18 kids my own age yes, who already know yes. me. Mm-hmm. But the other kids start doing their speeches. And immediately, <laughs> I'm remembering it as like my eyes rolled into the back of my head like, oh, fuck. Because all the other kids are talking about like humanitarian <laughs> crises, you know, <laughs> landmines in Somalia and... <laughs> world hunger and it's a speech contest like that's the kind of shit that they that they go one for the, one of the kids did it on like the aids crisis like <laughs> i love it and these I are really it. for the record these are really wow. crucially important topics to talk about especially at that age where you're old enough to engage in like critical thinking you know like you're sure. old enough to start actually thinking about stuff but they are also a like the- way quintessential stereotypical not to downplay any of that but it's like what is the most like serious like issue right. with a capital a capital i issue that i can tackle and <laughs> and do a thing on <laughs> so my teacher had had framed this assignment as like choose something that you're passionate about because yeah. it'll make it easier for you to write about you'll be more interested in it and it'll make yeah. it easier for you to talk about it because you actually know what you're talking about Totally. Obviously, yeah. these kids were getting the Oscar cut coaching. Like, right. we're going to pick right. these heavy ass topics because you need to be, you know, you need to, yeah. to it needs to have some weight. So basically, my <laughs> dumb ass <laughs> goes up there and talks about console <laughs> wars. <laughs> when other kids are Those talking wars about. wars were important too, okay? Other kids are talking dying. about okay, actual not dying, wars. But, yeah. Basically, it's, it's as if shooting gears a little bit, the landmine person gets off. Well, yeah. So let's lighten the mood a little bit here now. Have you heard about the Xbox? Uh... Basically, it's as if um, you're watching like a classic Oscar reels compilation, and then yeah. in the middle, someone decided to put in like Jim Carrey tallying off his like road infractions in liar liar an excellent yeah. performance but not classic <laughs> oscar real fodder you know? I, would, I would uh to, to to volunteer my own metaphor it'd be like in the oscar reel where they show who died that year it'd be if <laughs> if, if one of the people who died was like a fictional character who only died in a tv show <laughs> <laughs> in memoriam <laughs> said, yeah, yeah. And they're like, so yeah. So, you know, I still went up and I did my speech and I'm sure I did a good, I did it to the best of my ability. Um, yeah. But that's still an unfortunate situation to be in. And I distinctly I remember. I'm your teacher. To be fair, to be, to, so I, I'm laughing with you, not <laughs> at you, of course. And also I blame your teacher because I, you know, it, these kind of regional things, I'm sure that's inevitably where it goes. That's, I'm sure you had an awesome speech, but you're right. Like that assignment it's not the kind of assignment that you necessarily give when you want to win like regional speech well, competition or whatever. To be completely fair, I don't think anyone from my school had been there before. Okay. Like okay. I don't think that they knew what it was going to be. Everybody was like. doing it in French? Everybody was in French. It must have been. Now that I think I don't really remember. 
I okay. wonder if I was the only one speaking French. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> Maybe this is that a dream. Been extra that funny. You no, because there weren't that many French schools in the area. So, but there were okay. a lot of kids. There must have oh. been a bunch of them in English. Okay. This is getting more absurd by the second. Anyway, no, I love I the story. Though it's I distinctly remember story. when I did my opening line about like, you know, the the Microsoft Xbox, the Sony PlayStation Two, and the Nintendo GameCube are the contemporary consoles of our time or some shit like that. I know I listed them all off and one of the mm-hmm. judges immediately like his face could light up an entire city. He was like, holy shit, this kid's about to talk to me for two and a half minutes about video games. <laughs> I don't have to hear yeah, about so children. Tired of hearing about, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't like, have to hear uh, about the humanitarian atrocities. crisis. I get to yeah. listen to some stupid shit for a couple minutes. Thank God. And he actually let out like a woo when I started. <laughs> which is great oh, wow so like i didn't win but i got more of a reaction than anybody else did nobody else drew nobody drew tears or anything there like you that go. i you won their, their hearts maybe not their 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 minds or the competition but their hearts you, yeah. you won their hearts i don't i just noticed i wrote down your name as rogers uh <laughs> in my in my call sheet too i don't maybe i, ha- I might be having a stroke did you confuse me with um, tim rogers somehow we look very much alike i do that a lot yeah i don't maybe i was <laughs> i was talking to john rogers while i did it maybe that's where i got it uh speaking of john's uh john do the math ricciardi hi 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 how are you doing <laughs> Uh, I'm doing all right. It's been a long day. I've been working for like 13 hours at this point. What, what math am I, am I doing? Uh, the, the 60, 64 bit equals better than 32 bit. Therefore Jaguar oh, is better. Jaguar. It's the best, yeah. uh, console system ever. <laughs> Come pet the kitty. That? Come pet Wait, the cat. I thought whatever. we were done with yeah. Tina's speech. Dave Halverson's attempt at the, what, oh, what, 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 yeah. All those uh, Jaguar, uh, you know, ads and things that I had gone through during my recent trip home. Mark is referring to a uh, bumper sticker, I think, that I had. Two um, bumper like, stickers. That's right. Well, I had three. I kept one. So, oh, I was going to um, say, I'm surprised you gave up such a valuable uh, piece I don't, of history. I really don't need more than one. So I was just like, in a museum. What is that one? That I- <laughs> what does that one fetch at an at a A-plus rating at uh, the uh, Heritage Auctions? I <laughs> the WADA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's what a it's what a graded uh, right. bumper sticker. Uh, I mean, if you can't afford a Jaguar, you could just put that on your car, and it's the next best thing. But um, <laughs> I, uh, I, it was funny because all the like Atari related stuff for like for like four years worth of Atari related you know PR materials almost all talk about math. Even the links like what stuff like math was just yeah. their marketing thing. Like I guess they just thought they could win. Yeah, nothing else, man. Numbers. Yeah, look at the numbers. Look how many colors we can uh, do at once, and like. Yeah, somehow on paper, you can make the Jaguar actually seem like a competent system. It yeah. works great right up until the second that you have to actually see one of the ga- one of the games. I know, um, it's so bad. I remember being a kid and being like, for, for some reason, Jack, like Sam Tramiel, I think it was the guy who like ran Atari back then. Uh-huh. And for some reason, I really <laughs> didn't like that guy. And I don't remember why now, but I mean... I think it was related to the fact that like they were just a bunch of bullshit and then, you know, on all their yes. ads and stuff and then their games were terrible. Uh, and I worked at EB <laughs> at the time too. And so I probably had to deal with like, we had this guy who came to our store. We used to call him the Jaguar nerd, but like he would come in like every day and like just talk about Jaguar and like had to deal with that guy all the time. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, it was not a, a good scene, but yeah, it was interesting going back and seeing all that Atari shit. Um, Jaguar had its fans. Like its fans were even then on the like, internet. It's... Yeah. No, I remember on like, Alt.games.video. I guess it would have been Jaguar or Atari or, Probably. or uh, Alt. wherever Games. people would go to argue back then. Advocacy or something. I think there was one of them where I was just like, yeah. we are going to argue about which ones are best. There were people who were like, hey, man, the, this guy who worked on Fight for, uh, Virtua Fighter is now making a game it's called Fight for Life. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be better than Virtua Fighter. It's going to just shit all over. And like, look at that game fight for life. So the trailers yeah. for that game are, it's just, it's, that was like, it's classic, enjoyable. like it was like that Diablo, oh what was yeah. it? Diablo. They're like the Diablo, some members of the Diablo team worked on this Kickstarter RPG. And it was like, you know, the dude who was like the dude. third flutist from like the, I, yes. or something of yeah. the orchestra. Like, I, like, okay. project Phoenix. It's That's funny. Right. That's you bring up is. project Phoenix just to go down this uh, side path a little bit. Let's go. I totally randomly, Looked, I'm like, 
what what whatever happened to Project Phoenix? Like, like whatever right. happened to Project Phoenix? Like, com- nothing. But like, still, no, uh, well, no, maybe we'll do something at some like that. What was there was the one that scam. um there was another one that was another Japanese kind of indie Kickstarter. There was the that, Matsuno one that yes, I think eventually yes. got sold to somebody and, and is either was completed or was like on the road to being completed. I think maybe without Matsuno's involvement anymore or something. Like, I, I yeah, could be totally wrong. I, I vaguely remember the details, but like, it was also like, oh, this looks really bad for a while, but at least I believe they sold it off or something and like, you know, some progress is made. Unlike Project Phoenix, which from day one just looked like a scam. Even Completely. when people were backing it, I was like, really? Yes. Like, you know, yes. this just looks like a bunch of bullshit. And oh, what do you know? We it turned out it. to be a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, we were watching it because it happened right before my number nine. That's right. That's and right. like the guy was ending up on the same panels with my number nine. It was kind of like, I don't do, like, let, these are not, let's not put these two things next to each other <laughs> like they're the same here. Not that my number nine turned out at any great shakes either, but like at least it happened like it actually I know. I know. came out um anyway <laughs> good times Char- Char- yeah. Char- how that came from a tari jaguar talk well, on yeah that, but no. no but just to jump back to that real quick though it, it is interesting it's really fascinating to me so we're you know as history uh, sorry the history of like the internet era has you know whatever it's been what like 25 years ish since it became kind of you know mm-hmm. a, a household thing is like yeah. We've got we've gotten to the point now where I, I think there are too many opinions and they're everywhere and you can't get away from them. But I think back then <laughs> there were like too few opinions. And so you had people who could actually like, you know, make an argument for Jaguar or whatever. And like there weren't enough people around to shoot them down or like just, you know, spew. Knowledge I or, mean, you, you know. still have that, though. You still have people with irrational love for underdog brands and stuff like that you know you do, but like, you don't have a situation where like like look at the intellivision thing right now which i i to be fair i don't know a ton about that but i do know that i was I gonna see say that the you PR, went there you went there i was gonna i was gonna no, well, i mean the pr is kind there. of dive bombing right i mean they're not doing very well in the pr space i'm just watching as an innocent yeah. outsider i i actually want wanted one of those things so i mean i hope it turns around but like you know, I they're not doing it's, very well, but I feel like Jaguar yeah. would have been that back in the day. I think with enough like of a of a like the, the, with today's atmosphere, Jaguar would not have lasted a week. Like I feel like it would have just got like torpedoed out of the sky with facts and like you know about the technology <laughs> and the hardware. Like there just wasn't that back then to kind of shut it down. You know, 3D well, too. A, I mean, 3D O's <laughs> only like saving grace was that it had like a CD player. Like it was a hey, terrible 3DO- system. Radio did some did some things, man. It, it embraced indie developers. It it, it did okay yeah. for a few yeah. months in Japan. Like, I owned a 3DO, uh, so I'm not even like, yeah, I know. Panasonic did, put some money, and they tried, uh, and it was it. it was a bad idea. But they tried like letting the hardware be manufactured by multiple. Right, you know, right. they tried stuff for sure. Get that but, gold star 3DO. But I mean, yeah, it, behind under the hood, though, it was not. It was like a multimedia thing. It was not a game system. You know what I mean? I mean, there. It's a miracle. Ah. Like. I mean, we will never know. We will never know because you only had like two, besides with some few exceptions, you didn't have like a good first party in-house develop. I mean, you you don't ever know what a system is capable of until you have good developers working on it for a little bit. And like Crystal Dynamics did some stuff with the 3DO and then those people all went on to be like Naughty Dog and, you know. To do good things, so like I don't yeah, think there was, was no Rash talent. Was good and and Return Fire was good. I remember, but like also like yeah. ports like of like Street Fighter and Samurai Showdown, like they looked well, okay. Yeah. But like when you look behind the scenes, they were lacking like the barest ascent, like parallax and you know things totally, that but again been in there. But again, yeah, that it's hard to say. You know, if talented developer, more talented developers might have. Sure, I'm not like a 3D apologist. That controller <laughs> should be fucking like shot into space. <laughs> And and never heard you know talk, heard from ever again. But right. um, this is speaking the of which, for play podcast for hot takes on all the contemporary technologies the world has to offer. That's right. That's right. Up that's right. We keep it Tina, fresh. Well, don't worry. We're getting the bug snacks that <laughs> that hot new release very soon. I know. I know how how sensitive you are about only talking about the hottest newest releases. Only the latest. Um, <laughs> speaking of the latest, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You've been waiting so patiently for him to be introduced, as he has as well. Uh, our erstwhile, I don't know, Mike, should I call you our producer? Let's just say that. Let's say produced Ooh. by, let's Ooh. say produced, our producer, 
Executive well, producer. Pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, executive was with a G. Cool. With a G. Executive. Looks cool a little bit. Ex- <laughs> produced producer. Sure. Uh, Gabe Fine De Leon. Hi. Fine. What did I say recently? That, was that segue was a lot better than where it was going because he yeah, was about to segue from being shot into space to introducing you. That's where I was like... trying to go, and then <laughs> I got ruined. Uh, yeah, Gabe, uh, you got a fine. Yeah, you got a fine, fine rating really? on. Yeah, you don't remember this? I oh, thought it was like a yes, momentous yes. occasion. One of your few tweets, yes, was dedicated yes. to this. So I. Went through a bit of a, a From Software kick after doing the Demon Souls remake and uh, founded myself in the land of Bloodborne. Uh, and uh, for like the first time ever, I, my notes started getting ratings and I was so like, my heart grew three sizes every time. Are you talking little... about when you leave notes in the game, getting yeah, ratings yeah, yeah. from other people? Okay. Yep. So you're just running around and all of a sudden just a nice little pop up. One of your notes was rated fine, and it's just like, yes! Oh, that's <laughs> what you mean. Wait, fine as opposed to what? Foul. I thought he meant he got fined. Like, he, got, he had to pay a fee, you know, yeah, for, for doing too. something wrong. <laughs> Wait, like, so what? it's only fine or foul? It's not like fine, fine good, great, uh, nah, awesome? Thumbs up, thumbs oh, down. Okay. You don't know when they <laughs> thumbs down it. So hilariously, when I would check, when it pops up, hey, a note of yours is rated fine, you then check, and it's like, all right, one thumbs up and three thumbs down? All right. Because like, it it read to me like like a shrug, eh, fine, hey, it's, it's fine. fine, you know, it's fine, it's okay, I guess, you know, if I had to say, I, it's okay. Uh, Gabe, how are you finding Bloodborne? Do you have a tattoo uh, yet somewhere on your body? Or I wouldn't. Uh, I I'm not a tattoo person, but it is uh, solid. I did all the things you can do. I got the platinum. I got the DLC trophies. God damn, you got the yeah. Jesus Christ, the DLC trophies too. How many yeah, hours was, are we talking? How many you hours of your life is this? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, let's say, actually, because it was two characters. Uh, let's say Give like us a 50 estimate. hours? Yeah, it was like 50 hours. Wow. Wow. Because uh, so, I, I tried to do it as blind as possible. Right. Yeah, so not use the internet for hints or advice or any of that. You played nah. it. Okay. Um, rate, give us your Soulsborn hierarchy. <laughs> What, what all have you played now, then? Uh, so we've got Bloodborne, Demon Souls, and are we going to count Neo 2? I guess throw it in there. Why not? Since okay. you, if you haven't played any of the Dark Souls games. No, still. I, I, okay. I have not. Got it. Okay. Uh, so I would say those three are, are the up. three I've done. Uh, right, right now? Oh, okay, in that order. Bloodborne 1, <laughs> Demon Souls 2, and uh, Neo 2. Really? Third. So Bloodborne is your, is yeah. your top? Okay. Mm. Did yeah. you just platinum all of those? I platinum Demon Souls, uh, like that was. I platinum Demon Souls. Then I went into Bloodborne, and then beat Bloodborne. And I'm like, yeah, I'll keep putting time in this. I guess I'll get the platinum. Neo Two, I played last year. Wow. And, uh, did not. It, I was done with it before it was done with me. Is how I will phrase Uh-oh. that. <laughs> uh, it just went too long, uh, huh. and I. It is too Diablo for my tastes. Like I just want to know. I just want the green to me and I do more damage. I don't want to go, well, this is doing 5% more when this thing triggers. So uh, okay. Too I have to factor that into my DPS sheet. And it's, it's that Too much thinking. Yeah. So, uh, got it, but it like, it's got that single Kajita aesthetic. So thumbs up for that. Gabe, you're, right our, you are surely the most decorated member of our group. In terms of Roy, might be with the the, the trophies, the trophy cabinets lining oh. your walls. <laughs> yes. you, I think another way to put that is, Gabe, you have by far the most free time of any of us. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, I can't even. Ima- Shocker, I, the one guy I, who doesn't I, work I in the game even, business has normal. Imagine normal job having that hours. much free time. Like, imagine I can't. Like, it's hard <laughs> for me. Hard. It's kind of like me imagining. Yeah, I, I have to like being like a Soviet astronaut or something. It's like, I, like intellectually, I can kind of understand, I guess what it would be like to finish a game and be like, I have, I'm going to just platinum it. Why, why not? Yeah. Like, I like that's it. so f- foreign to me. Like it's, I'm, I'm very jealous. Don't get me wrong. I'm incredibly <laughs> jealous, but um, I gave up. I mean, good for you, man. So you, play. No, there's no other way. I just sleep less. It's, it's the only yeah. way. Well, I gave that up too. <laughs> but I gave that up too, but didn't get it. 
<laughs> still. They're good. I like, like this was this was That's my good. Best. I'm glad you you dug it and you were playing it on your PS5 and so yeah. the uh there's not like a frame rate patch for it is there. If you have a modded PS4 there is a 60 frames per second patch. I do not. So I just got the decent load times. Not not as oh, fast as that Demon Souls. That sucks though. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks that it's still cuz it's absolutely capable of it of yeah. course. But It was definitely one huh. of those like I played Bloodborne and then switch to to final fantasy 14 to check something real quick and then all of a sudden it's moving too fast because the jump to 60 frames per second i'm just like whoa i gotta whoa i'm not used to this well I have you to got you got about three four more months to now to play through uh the, all the dark souls games to uh, be oof. ready for I was telling the Tina, ring, think, the one ring to rule them all no oh, i was telling tina i think yeah, i'm right out <laughs> like i get really it. I get it. I'm good. I don't. I, I I hear middling things about Dark Souls two. I hear decent well, things. Yeah, about I one and know three. what you mean. I think Zookeeper just came out on Apple Arcade. That will <laughs> cleanse your palate. Right yeah, now from the, from a, the like darkness that has surrounded your soul slap your in heart. the face. Uh, Gabe, though, I would still say, and having played uh, all, all of those games, though none of them. Yeah, none of them, none of them to the extent that you have. I would still put uh, the first Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, I, I know there's the, the Bloodborne fans time. that think that that's up there and that, that that's the best. But like Dark Souls gameplay, level design, world building, story. Yeah, uh, everything about it. So I would still I mean, play something else. Certainly like platforming sure. Bloodborne. I'm sure you're ready to do something else for a while. But um, yeah. but but the, the thing. In, what what grabbed me the most about Demon Souls and Bloodborne was the level design. Like I'm, I've heard it made sense. Well, then you really should play. I mean, Demon Souls has some cool stuff too, but like, yeah, yeah Dark Souls just masterclass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear, hearing that, uh, I would always hear, "Oh man, when you find a shortcut, it is like the best thing ever." And yeah. running around and connecting the dots in your head, and like going through that, it's it it's real. Like that is a very real. Like oh, thank God. I yeah. know where I am now. I'm I'm back. Oh, jeez. You'll you'll experience it. You'll, we'll talk about it when, when yeah. you come I, back. The uh, reason why I think I'm done is just because Elden Ring's coming, and I don't want to be like, all right, I've just played nine of these games. Sure, so you, need you don't want to be sick that. of it. Yeah, so, sure, sure. yeah. We'll, we'll, That's cool. Hard. Take a take a breather. We'll put on. Uh, all right. So yeah, we joke about uh, recent games because a lot of us have been playing non recent games. But why don't we start with the one that is actually like hot. Hot off the presses. Uh, can we we can talk about it, John? Can we talk about it starting a today? Bit, yeah. So lost. We're talking about Lost Judgment. Um, Only a little bit. Is it still under embargo? It's more like no. I think it's okay to talk about it now. It's just that oh, okay. I'm not done with it, and so I don't want to go too far yet. I, I definitely want to save some time to get more a little more in depth with it. But I could talk a little bit about it now. So Lost Judgment is coming out next week. Well, we're not going to do. We'll do no spoilers because obviously yeah, people yeah. haven't played it. Especially with but you've played of. it a bunch, right? You've played it. I've played a, about uh, like 25 see? hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm like yeah. maybe four fifths of the way through the main story, according to my PS5. That's one nice thing about PS5 games. Like a lot of them have that. What is it? The game info cards now or whatever yeah. that basically tell you how far you are, which I, kind of I don't like that. You want to you want to know that? I don't oh, want to yeah. know that. I need, dude, I'm that's completely on Mark's side. I don't want to know. Right. Sometimes they give the away. Time management. No. Yeah. It's like how many away, pages are left? How many pages are left in the in the book? Or like, oh, I don't want to know. It's just, it's just like you are. No, but it's the same nine. thing. That's the same. That's no, the I same thing. That. It doesn't. I See, to me, that is my <laughs> indicator that I can actually. Like if I had played this much and it still said like 15%, I would probably put the game down because it's not going to happen. Like I'm glad to know, uh, you know, roughly how much time I'm going to be spending with these games. Um, but like, for example, let's just I want to pull on this. Talk sure. on this thread a little bit because I think it's interesting. So, yeah. for example, in mm-hmm. certain games, I can see it either not mattering or actually wanting to know it myself. But in other sure. games, like for example, I was trying to think of a, a, a quickly that it would impact. Uh, you haven't played. How far did you play in Last of Us Part Two? Oh, not far at all. Like probably okay. like three hours, four hours. Mm-hmm. So, game. all right. So I won't. I won't do that as an example. But like a Metal Gear game. A Metal Gear game or like Resident Evil 4 where I thought, oh, okay, this is the ending of the game. And then there was this whole other kind of like there's that whole other island that you go to 
there's a whole other chapter or sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, pick, pick a metal gear game almost. I mean, there's sure, almost sure. to a fault. Like there's some, like 20 endings, but if, if I was seeing the meter and be like, Oh no, this is just like a fake ending. Cause it's the meters only at like 80%. Like, uh, okay. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I wouldn't like that. And actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about this. Maybe, maybe this is a special case where, cause okay. Thinking about it, I haven't really used that until now on PS5. I do play a lot of PS5 games, but I haven't really, mm. but, but this time I'm really appreciating it because the way I play Yakuza games, I mean, I played mm. all of them. I played judgment as well is, you know, we try to get through the main story as soon as possible because it's, it's you know, it's, it's good. It's interesting. And then there's a shit ton of other stuff to do. So it's not like I'm going to be done with the game so much as like, okay, I, I've made my yeah. like initial goal. So I think that kind of colors. And it lets you, story. it lets you do the end game thing where you run around and do this, all the stuff. Even they usually you do. I don't know what's going to happen story. in this one, but usually there's a mode uh, called, um, what's it called? I forgot what it's called, but it's premium essentially like adventure? New Game Plus. Like you can go, yeah, pre- yeah, premium adventure maybe or something like that, where you could basically <laughs> wow, that is a and, Japanese ass. That is a Japanese ass name. I forget what it's called. It's for something that. like that, um, but you can go back and do all, like the side stories you missed and all those things. Did so, Judgment have that? Did the? Did, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sure this one has it then. Yeah, I don't always do it. I always have. I always intend to do it, and then when I'm done, I'm like, man, that was awesome. Okay, I need, I need a break, you know. But sure. Anyway, okay. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. So let's talk okay. about yeah. so. This is the follow up to, to follow judgment, up to judgment. Uh, the Yakuza team, uh, Kimitaku, uh, famous Japanese Tom Cruise guy that we've talked about at nauseum, but, uh, we argue about who his, uh, who his American equivalent <laughs> would be. Yeah. It's Tom Cruise, but, uh, <laughs> Him, uh, Tom Cruise, if he's yeah, had he's a not a dick, career. and he's not like into weird Scientology. Bullshit. We don't know. He, we, we don't know. He could be. <laughs> he could be totally into that shit. Like th- Johnny's would keep it quiet. Like <laughs> right. they, they would kill anyone who. If I disappear tomorrow for this podcast <laughs> right. mysteriously, you will know what what happened. I'm a fan. Just, just to be Johnny's, if you're listening, we his, love him. Management studio. We love, love all the Johnny's boys. All of would them. Never, would never mod a PC version of the game to put like a funny mustache on him or like ha- have a butt for a face <laughs> or do any of that kind of thing. Would never do that. Just mm-hmm. putting that out there. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yes, I think we've set the table. So, <laughs> this, this coming out on uh, what systems? Yeah. PS4, PS5, and both, you know, all the Xboxes. All of the Xbox I call them Xbox and now. I just Xboxen. say like <laughs> I just got so tired of writing the different thing. It's just like Xbox yeah. and I, I'm like, maybe that's some kind of, yeah. It's like that, a, it's it, like that a, implies a all things all Xbox, right? Yeah, it covers it's like a murder of Xboxes or whatever. Just so there you go, things. exactly. It's like the German <laughs> plural of Xbox, like PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox and Xbox. Yeah. Uh, okay. As we talked about before, there is no PC version of this, but yeah, there's Play- yes. PlayStation 4 and 5 and Xbox. And um, yeah, it's a sequel to Judgment, which is the sort of um, the only remaining, you know, Yakuza style game in existence, old school, you know, uh, street fighting sort of action based game. Now that the real series, the mainline series has gone on to becoming an RPG thing. But um, anyway, it's follow up to Judgment from a couple of years ago. Another um, basically like, you know, detective story essentially um the main you play a detective the main character who used to be a lawyer and you're you know out solving a a pretty complicated crime um the big the big difference on this one this time around is that so the the main area of the last game was all kamurocho which is like the main area of the yakuza series the basically kabukicho like equivalent um this time they move they go the the game takes place there as well as ijincho which is the yokohama area from yakuza 7 big ass huge place I um, love which, it. You know, obviously because they already have all the yeah, assets and everything. Exactly. Else. <laughs> exactly. But, but yeah, they made, they made a story element out of it. A couple of the guys from the first game, you know, had moved over to Ijin show to start their own detective agency. And they end up calling on Yagami, the main character of judgment to come and help. And that's how he gets embroiled in this big case over there. So um, this is like, is this, is there like a Yakuza cinematic universe that this art, do it they does actually... belong to the universe, but they're they do their best to not have many cameos. Like they don't, you won't see like Kiryu showing up in Judgment or whatever. You know, but they do like, acknowledge that that some characters timeline. are yeah. in the. Okay, that's really in, cool. In Yakuza okay. Seven. If you go to the office where uh, Yagami's office, it's there. Like you could see it. Like that's awesome. Judgment. So and and likewise, like in uh, like the first thing I did in, in Lost Judgment was go right to the. There's a bar called Survive in Yakuza Seven in Ijincho, where a lot of the game takes place. 
And of course, mm-hmm. I immediately went there to see, you know, if the people who work there are still there. And I'm not <laughs> going to spoil that. But, it was, you know, there's, there's oh, those cool. kind of like light connections, but they try to keep it on its own, you know, thing. Um, anyway, it's very similar in style to the first game. I just kind of improved on every level in terms of like, you know, I feel like there's more. So the first game had a lot of... Um, and you like the first you know, game. Stealth elements. To be clear. I, I love the first game. Yeah, great story, like great writing. Like the thing that hit me the most was like, wow, okay, yeah, that's right. Sometimes Japanese games do have really well written like stories. Like it was a, it was a, a mystery thriller or whatever you want to call it, and it did a really really good job with it. Um, and uh, what I will say is like I'm far enough along in this one to say it is like better than the first game like the story is really really gripping like it's really really good um i'm like su- awesome. surprised because i watching the trailers leading up to it and the f- sort of pre footage is like a lot of emphasis on one of the new elements now is that you a lot of this takes place in high school like there is a full ass fully modeled like four floor like deluxe school in yokohama that's you know very authentic to japanese schools um, where a lot of the game takes place. And when I saw that, I was like, I- I'm not a fan of school, like settings in it's general. Getting all persona on that. Uh, yeah, on that but it's, shit. but it's, but it's actually very not. It's actually very like authentic, you know, Japanese school and, and, you know, um, not like. Are you saying persona is not authentic? Are you saying that's not a documentary about <laughs> yeah, pretty much modern yes, Japanese but it's yeah, school of life? <laughs> no, it, it's, 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 it's different. It feels interesting. And I was surprised because I wasn't excited about that, but that turned out to be a really, really cool part of this game. And, you know, there's ma- a lot of student main characters, some teachers. Without spoiling, some, without yeah. spoiling, can you say why so much of it takes place in a high school? Is it a time um, jump? Let's thing, say that or? I think we can say because this is in the trailers and stuff that one of the themes of this game is uh, a, about a case involving bullying. Um, and, okay, got it. Yeah, say know. no more. That's yeah, fine. and so it you know that that kind of sets the stage, but which they, is a they, big they, deal, big topic in Japan, like a very hot button issue. I mean, it's like right. anywhere, but anywhere, especially sure. in yeah. especially in Japan, that is like a actual like. Yeah. If like yeah, if there was like a law jet law and order Japanese special unit or whatever, <laughs> right. it would be about bullying like uh, yeah. every other time, like ripped from the headlines. Um <laughs> basically. Okay. Um but you know, in true um RGG style, you know, there is a billion things Asterisk, to do at the school. Yeah. Right, Ryugago Toku Studio, the, the Yakuza creators and Judgment creators. There's a billion other things to do. Like, there's a whole... Every one of these games, the Yakuza games have, like, I think they call them side stories, and then the Judgment games have side cases where you take on these, like, little mysteries, like, uh, you know, who stole... Somebody in our company is stealing money from the from the safe or taking food out of the fridge. Like, you got to find the criminal or whatever, and we hire you. But then there's also, like, there's a whole new set of things called school stories, which mm-hmm. I've played like 20 something hours and I haven't even messed with yet because I'm like saving that because I'm just, I'm excited for that, but it's not part of the main story and I don't really want to like dabble in it too much. But like, you know, you, you do a little of like dance choreography with the dance team. You, you become, you know, you work with like, they have, there's like a, well, I don't want to spoil stuff. There's like different clubs, like a typical Japanese school. Like Very Yakuza like sounds like though, where there's like mini games and different tons like, of stuff to uh, do. tongue in cheek kind of like more lighthearted sections and that's totally sort of totally and they do a really amazing job uh, again of striking that balance where there's just some silly shit and they know it's silly and they're leaning into the silliness but then at the same time you got a pretty like mature you know dark story that keeps you guessing throughout and that's what what is really exciting about it to me is because i, I don't it's hard to guess where it's going and what's going to happen and like there's crazy twists and there's just a lot of shit happening and um, and, and the topics are heavy and, and, you know, potentially triggering to some people. I, I don't even want to get into what uh, some of the other stuff that goes on in this game, but it's like, it probably could have used a warning at the beginning, like about some of the topics and stuff. And so, I mean, one of them is bullying, like I said, but, um, isn't but it so- interesting? We talked about that last time. I feel like the thing that we just hit on that anime does, it can do and stuff is get away with like really serious, hard hitting kind of almost melodrama drama. Yeah. And then super, like, almost, like, slapstick, like, silliness and and comedy. Like, I think it's so great. But, like, you try to imagine, like, a you know, a a God of War or something having, like, a dancing section in or something like that. And, like, of course, they're different games. It's a different tone or whatever. But, like, somehow Japanese games are able to pull that off. And, I mean, I guess anime is, in general, as well. well, These games games are able to... 
Yeah. They've always yeah. done really well with the humorous stuff and like, you know, just the absurdity of the situations the characters find themselves in is always really entertaining. But um But yet you know, they still can get away with like very like emotional like, you know, scenes and totally. maybe care about the players and like life and death situations and stuff. Like yeah. It, completely, yeah. And um you know, um gameplay wise, you know, it's like again, it feels just like an upgraded version of judgment in every way, like Similar stealth sections to before, but they're executed a little better because like some of the stuff in the first game was a little annoying, especially tailing people like it sometimes would go on for like way too long and there wasn't much you could do. They've added things you can do while you're tailing. You can like stop and look at your phone and shit and try to hide or they make the sections a little bit shorter and more compact. So you're not getting sick of it. They've added um, sort of like I, like uh, uncharted slash like Assassin's Creed like parkour sections where you're like climbing walls and like, you know, jumping from pipe to pipe to get around buildings and stuff to sneak into places or, you know, interesting. Now, now you can like, when you're doing stealth stuff, you can like throw items at, like you can throw like gas bombs at enemies, or you can just throw coins to get them to like walk away to like get your way around the map. So the hell, gas, just, gas bombs, <laughs> not, not gas, <laughs> like bombs, a lawyer. Smoke, smoke bombs, you know, like, you know, like, like a, okay. Even I mean, still, it is a I'm little kind of absurd. surprised. Still, it's a little, the, a little, yeah less grounded than the rest of the game seems like, but okay. It just sure. it fits, but yeah, but yeah, there's just, you know, a little bit more of everything. Um, you can get around uh, the city on a skateboard now, uh, which is cool. So like you're, you know, instead of having to walk everywhere or take taxis, if you just want to move like moderately it's fast, like fast it's travel like yeah. dash button. Um, okay. Well, taxis are like the fast travel. The skateboard is like, you ah, can just hustle right. your way around. Can you, town, can you get me. fined if you're like skateboarding where it's not allowed? No, they won't let you skateboard where it's not a lot. You just he'll just okay. get off the skateboard. So, all right. Um, anyway, I as much as we've talked about it, I, I'm glad I haven't gotten into it too much because I don't. I want to finish it first, but I have to say, like you know, the voice uh, cast on this game. So, I always play the Yakuza games in Japanese because usually that's all they come in. But as of Judgment One, they started doing an English voice dub too, and. I'm, you know, I'm very picky about voice dubs. If they're not good, I will immediately turn it off because it just distracts me. It feels like I'm working and then like getting annoyed at bad performances and blah, blah, blah. But they, they did a really great job with the voices again. Um, the cast is so nice. good. The main character, uh, Greg Chun plays um, Yagami. He's just fantastic. He like nails every line and he like, he is the character now to the point where like, if I see Kimitaku now, I kind of expect to hear his voice. <laughs> um Wow, that's a and, uh, that's a huge compliment. Yeah, to, no, uh, the voices are great. I mean, you know, voices. like anything, you're going to hear a weird bit here and there, or like a wait, that's not how you read that line. But I, that's just because we work in the business, and I, I see that all the time. But like, I would say it's better than 98 percent of most voice dubs. Like, it's really, really good. Um, and so I'm playing in all English, English text, English voices, um, and I'm loving it. And it's really, uh, I, I, I can confidently say that I think it's better than the first game. And I, you know, I really like the first game. So. Not That's that I can tell That's you because on this, they're all going to try it anyway. But if you were on the fence or whatever, like I, Lost Judgment, I think is uh, is really, 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 really good, and I can't wait to That's, finish it and then yeah, dig yeah. into the side stuff. Do you you don't know if it's on Game Pass? Do you? It's not on Game Pass. No, not yet. Anyway, it's it's probably okay. too valuable to be on Game Pass at this point. Right. But. Yeah. Right out of the gate. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's it's awesome. out next week, I think. As a, yeah, like the twenty something, if the twenty first or something like that. I think it comes out. So cool. Yeah. Thank you, Sega, for the codes. Yes, of course, as always. Um, and uh, shifting gears, not quite so new and fresh, but Tina, you were very excited to talk <laughs> about bug snacks. See the thing about or bug you snacks. Sing the bug snacks is that, you want to get back into that is it they're kind of bug but they're kind of snack they're bug snacks slow down you lost me, you lost oh, me. there we go okay let me double uh, dial so it like, back <laughs> Tina, let me ask did you get this game as part of you probably didn't you know because you didn't have a ps5 then so you know it launched into playstation plus instant game collection but only the ps5 version so you, how did you end up buying it and playing it? Um, so I wanted to play it when it was like when it was announced and it was all over the internet and it was the only thing that anyone could see or hear for like uh, quite a long time. I was like, oh, that looks neat. I want to play that when it comes out eventually. And then it came out and a bunch of other stuff was also there. So I just kind of didn't get to it because I was busy playing other very contemporary classics such as Moon and Earthbound. You know, I really got my finger on the pulse of video gaming. Um, but 
I'm really looking forward to uh, Kana is coming out next week. And I just finished the last game that I was playing. So I was like, ooh, what's something not too big that I can kind of get into for the, the couple of weeks of lull space that I have here? And I looked it up and it seemed like 10 to 12 hours was the like 100% completion time for Bugs Nuts. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's perfect. Let's do it. It happened to also be on sale. It was perfect. There you go. There you go. Snack it up. Let's do it. So you jumped into Bug Snacks and jumped loved into it. Bug Snacks, tweeted about it the whole time. Had a really great mm. time. It's really fun. It's it's really fun. Is the bottom line if for like the too long didn't read. It's just a really fun game to play. What did you like about it? Were you expecting like a, a Pokemon esque adventure, or what were you expecting? What'd you get? Um, I I didn't really have any expectations for it. Just I was expecting it to be silly and funny because the trailer is very silly and funny. Like, you know, a guy comes out and expresses difficulty performing a task himself because of his weenie hands and holds up his hands that are sausages. So, like, yeah. you know, you're not expecting Oscar real material right. here. You know? <laughs> um, and I definitely got all the the silly that I was expecting. It's really fun. It's um not it's you know, you know, horses, so it's the Oct- you also know it's the Octodad people, right? I know so it's you the Octodad people. Get a sense, but I've never played yeah. Octodad either. So like the concept of oh. Octodad is ridiculous. So that's already enough oh. of a briefing. But I've never played it. And sure, I would very much like to now. I think you, yeah, I think you would. You might enjoy that. Yeah. It's out, it's out on everything, including a mobile. There's like a mobile. Dang, that is an accessible oh. game. Maybe I'll do that. Mm, canis, mm. Anyway, 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 getting sidetracked. The Bug Snacks have great writing. The writing is really funny. The performances are really, really good. I didn't realize going in, because I knew absolutely nothing about it going in, because I didn't want to know anything. You know, I like to be surprised. I didn't realize the cast that they had put together for this game was so impressive. Yeah. And mm-hmm. after I finished playing it, and I, there was nothing left for me to spoil for myself. I went on to Wikipedia and started doing some reading and saw the cast list and was like, dang, no wonder it was so impressive. Holy yeah, it's shit. There's a bunch of A-listers in the like video game VO community for sure. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Like I was looking at who all these people and I was like, oh, shit, that's... Yo, Shinji was in this game? What the fuck? So it's cool. It, it's It's really good. All the characters. It, it are... makes a difference too. It makes a real difference because a lot of that game is the personality of the characters, and the personality comes through in the voices. And like they do things that are kind of harder to do in voice work. Like I don't know that they do like the interrupting each other thing perfectly, but they do things like pauses and like like they they get it. They get what the characters are. They get the line reads right. Like it's, it's, it's done well from the, from the few hours that I played that game. Yeah. The voices are actually one of the highlights, I think. And something that I often struggle with in games with voice acting is I have finished reading before they have finished performing the line. And usually that gets really, really frustrating because I want to skip ahead. Cause I'm like, okay, I already know what you're going to say. Shut up. For right. this one. I let everybody finish what they had to say because I wanted to hear them say it. Yeah, just you know, he listened to it that way. Yeah, the, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and the yeah, you, know, the, you weren't in such yeah. Yeah, the the game is is named after the bug snacks, and the bug snacks are like the elevator pitch appeal. You know, they're animals made out of food that say their own names, like Pokemon, and you got to figure out ways to to trick them into getting caught. And it's fun and silly. But the heart of the game is 100% in the characters and in their personal struggles. And, you know, they give you... The non-Bug Snacks characters. Non-Bug the, <laughs> well... Were they called, like, the Wumpuses or the Grumpuses? The grumpuses. But there right, are no grumpuses. non-Bug Snacks characters. Because mm-hmm, you are what you eat. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. No spoilers. No, it's no literally no in the trailer. Spoilers. He eats the strawberry and his arm turns into a strawberry. Come on, man. Yeah, it's a single... That's like the Funny whole games. bit. <laughs> oh, this is like a ship of Theseus. When are you fully bug snack? When are you still human? Mm. <laughs> or gr- Grumpus, apologies. Grumpus. Um, and they give you little missions, you know, like the first couple missions are always get me a Strabby and a Bunger and a Frider. And you go off and get these specific snacks and then give them to them. But eventually each character has like multiple tiers of 
quests that end up becoming really personal and deep and they like you're helping them solve their internal struggle something is missing from their life like on a really surface level there's one person who has constantly driven people out of her life because she's just such a mean bitchy gossip and she can't stop herself from doing it one person is a musician who is struggling to find inspiration because she's desperate to not become a one-hit wonder um there are the cast is also cast of characters is very diverse which is a weird thing to say about a bunch of monsters that are all just like a bunch of different colors but there are there's a wide range of relationships presented both romantic and otherwise there's a wide range of gender identities presented and the way that they are presented it's not made an issue of at all when there's like when a non-binary character comes into the game, no one says it's like, oh, they're non-binary. Be careful with their pronoun. Like, it's just not right. talked about. A character it, says, oh, right. that's so and so. Matter of fact, like, they yeah. do this, that, and the other thing, and they hate this kind of snack. So watch out. Don't give them that. And just the game right, expects right. you to pick up on it and just you know carry on. Yep. Which is great. How about that? Uh, how about that ending? I think the only part of Bug Snacks that we have talked at, I don't know, I don't know how much I said about it on the podcast, uh, except that I had heard, oh, you should you should watch the Bug Snacks ending, and so I went on I YouTube at the time when it came out. I didn't watch it, yeah, and watched it. It's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Uh, Worth it. I, we don't want to spoil it. I think even now, still, so or do we? I don't know, <laughs> uh, but. I it's, don't care, uh, but somebody probably cares. It's still kind of new. It's probably a little too soon. Yeah, that, I, <laughs> I do encourage people to play it, especially you might already already have it in your PS Plus collection, or just to go to YouTube if you're curious. But uh, mm. yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, yeah. I I do fully recommend it. It's not flawless. The physics is sometimes kind of fucky. Things get stuck to each other, or a hanging object will just like bat wildly in the air even though nothing's touching it but it doesn't really affect your experience it's if you look at it as part of the charm it's fine where it needs to be strong it's very very strong hmm. and otherwise it's fine like fine like cherry wine it was a good no, time fine like, more notes. Fine like game. it's a yeah, fun time mind, daily and it was fun enough that i platinumed it and i'm a person who doesn't really give a nice. shit about trophies you they made the platinum they made the platinum pretty accessible, I think, in that one, right? How, how much extra time did you have to put into it to get the uh, so you had to get the both endings, maybe? I'm a good ending. I'm kind of a completionist in the sense that I wanted to finish every one side quests before I finished the game, which just from doing right. that, I kind of got all almost all of the trophies through my normal gameplay anyway. Before I went through it, before I went through the ending, I had a couple of hidden trophies left that ended up just being part of getting the ending that were hidden by nature of they didn't want to spoil anything that was going to happen. So I ended up having only three trophies left at the end. And one of them was the platinum. So I played for like an extra hour after rolling credits and I was done. Nice. Right on. Uh... The music is great too. Also soundtrack, really good ambient music. There you go. It's, Ooh, it's you like that theme song. Did you get that theme song back in your head? So the theme song, the theme song, and it's what's her face, right? Uh, Caro Caro Bonito. Some, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the I was theme song, else, but that is yeah. Simultaneously, extremely deceitful, and also tells you exactly what the fuck to expect. It's is nothing. That a spoiler? No, no, it's not. <laughs> okay, it's nothing okay. like the rest of the soundtrack. So if you're expecting like cutesy utsy bullshit, you're not gonna find it there. Hmm. It's but like also the game's hard, really hardcore. Cute shit. Right. Right on. Um, okay, do you, Gabe, do you want to do we need to check in on Pokemon Unite or no, uh no, no, no. Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're adding Pokemon. I saw this, I saw this Blastoise. Uh Austin Walker described oh, this Blastoise that, right? as like Something about the he was king of comedy. He was like he was going yeah. off on it, like expected to see him playing dominoes. 
And I just I like, totally uh, uh, nailed it. The Blastoise like alternate uh, costume made me think yeah. of it. But you know, we don't need to. Uh, it's up, if you guys want to talk about it, Blastoise about Rex it. in the right hands. It's uh, I'm happy to have a Blastoise on my team. Uh, but I not comes out on You're switching mobile. your main or what? What's your? What's your I'm, deal? I'm rocking Blissey now. Blissey, the the Chancy evolution from Gen Two. Okay. Uh, pure support style character um you know as i continue the well i don't want to be an attacker so i'll just fill uh it's usually uh snorlax or blissey now as i continue my mediocre grind through the expert <laughs> tier uh it's which a miserable is, slog it's a miserable slog. are you still playing tina or did you give that up uh, I have not for the last little while because I've been busy fucking with bug snacks. I'll probably right. go back okay. to it, but at the same time, it's coming on mobile soon, and I don't know how much that's gonna yep. contribute to the experience. Oh yeah, Gabe, I I cut you off. When does it remind us? When does it next come to... week? I think twenty second sounds right. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's U.S. or Japan, but I think sometime next week. So pre pre down pre register, get your Pikachu. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a good get time. Your Pikachu not... on. Get your Pikachu. If you own Pikachu, get your coins for compensation. Unless you've already hit your limit for the week, in which case, go fuck yourself. Yeah. I still haven't put money on it. I I keep wavering. (laughs) So uh, not even like my Nintendo gold coins, which you can use uh, as as to like buy stuff there. So I don't know. It's... I only have so much time. I only have so much time in the day for so many battle pass games, and between Apex and Pokemon Unite, like that's that's already a full plate. Is yeah, I only, have one, I have only, only have one slot yeah. for like that that style of game. And by style, I mean like game that is essentially driven by money, like game as a like service, gotcha game or yeah, game as a Evergreen. service, or yeah, I guess so. Um, so like I I find myself whenever I cl- like uh, clasp onto one another one falls off. Like I got back into Pokemon go for a little while after like taking like a year and a half off and got into it pretty much for like six weeks. And then like friends of ours started you're, playing games. Back, back out. I'm you're back, back out, out because now I'm back into Genshin. Impact. Oh, cause you're in a Genshin is. impact. Yeah. I, I can't, I <laughs> why? can't do more. I mean, why it's like 10 times better than Pokemon unite. I disagree. Pokemon <laughs> unite is good. Uh Oh, Gen- have you played Genshin? I did. I have tried to play that game multiple times. It just doesn't click with me. It opens up. The problem is it doesn't open up until like you get to like rank like 10 or something at least. So like I didn't know I that mean, either. I had the same problem. The first few times I played, I was like, this is really pretty, but there's nothing to do. But now there's everything to do. And so like every day I play or at like over lunch or at night or whatever to like, like move forward. Uh, I'm rank 18 and I still disagree. <laughs> so, oh man, no, you need to, you need to get into it. It's really good. No, nah, uh, you know that it needs a lock on. Like I can't not lock on to the enemies and run like Z this targeting. is a solved problem. Yes. We solved this problem. It's called Z target. Make it too, too easy. Make it too easy. You gotta, you gotta challenge I, yourself. Gabe. There's that can't too. Play simple games like Pokemon Unite. You gotta, yeah, you know, you gotta fight. <laughs> can't play simple games like Bloodborne and Platinum that shit. Like a little baby bitch. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Excuse me, I dropped my uh, pacifier. Uh, <laughs> all right, then I guess uh, then did we get should alloy? move on to the news. Did you get alloy, John? She gave asked you a question. Oh, I thought. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> she's not good, though. I mean, not that she's not good, but like I, I have my four characters that I'm using in that game, and it's like yeah. I at this point I plan to just. I don't want to like switch and start building up another character because it's a lot of work and a lot of items and things like that. So I'm sticking with my main four right now. The thing about that game that's interesting, if you're into gacha games, is like, you know, it's like taking the gacha mechanics but putting it in Zelda Breath of the Wild, only it's prettier than Zelda in a lot of ways because of the tech. And then like, there's only like 30, 40 characters or something like that compared to like some gacha games in Japan where you'll have like 900 characters or something like that. So like, it's a much smaller group to like get acquainted with. So. I'm not going to try to convince you. I had a hard time getting into it. It took me a little while, but what happened is we have some friends of ours who were like, started talking about it a bunch and that made me want to try again. And like, I finally got over the hump, like, and the hump was as simple as like unlocking like commissions, daily commissions, then unlocking like the reputation meter, which you're probably not there yet, but like that lets you like get on these, a whole bunch of other different kinds of quests and things. And then like, it just, the game opens up a lot. Are you mm-hmm. playing, and in playing on or PS5? Japanese? 
in English. Um, and I'm playing on PS5, which is amazing because yes. this is a game that really benefits from the PS5 loading. There is literally, there's a yeah. massive, massive world and like instant fast travel. There's like no loading at all. It's amazing. So I can like do stuff like, you know, oh, I'm going to hop back there and heal real quick and then come back to where I was in, in like 10 seconds. Like it's amazing. So uh, I'm, I'm into it. Uh, I admit, I, I confess I'm kind of hooked right now, but that said, <laughs> I'm not nearly as hooked as the two friends of ours who are also playing who like talk about it in levels or I'm like, okay, you guys are must be playing this all day. I play like about a half hour a day and I'm enjoying it. So right on. Okay. Uh, so why don't we move on to the news game news theme song? Go. News. It's news snacks. Oh, there you go. You thought of it a little too late. You Not in it. post. Got it at the end. Oh, there you go. Yeah, fix it in post. Do it live. Uh, let's see. Well, why don't we talk about the uh, PlayStation Showcase 2021? Yes. Um, so this was not a state of play, but Sony's big deal. Holyfield, uh, basically like their E3, but their E3 thing would be like that level, that kind of caliber of games um so chess playstation 5 uh chess coming open world Ooh, chess, chess game um i did think it was funny that people didn't get immediately i was watching some of the like watch alongs and people were like what what game is this for people didn't get necessarily immediately that it was a playstation branding uh thing that it started yeah. with you know the um Oh, with yeah. the people running around, like, doing a commercial. The people like, running around in cars yeah. and stuff, and, like, they represented, like, people on the pieces on the chessboard, and there was, like, a, a chess match going on. Like, very, like, uh, people you might have seen walk out of the rave in uh, The Matrix 2, uh, right, uh, right. taking part mm-hmm. in this um, giant... Uh, I know people here are very excited about The Matrix. Just to put it in terms, people are talking about these days. The Matrix uh, hit rock bottom, so it can only get better. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. I mean, how can it get worse? Uh, it'd be pretty hard. The website right, well, knew I mean, what yeah. time it was when I was watching the video, Mark. Morpheus said to me, you think it's 3.16 a.m., but you'd be wrong. And I was like, holy fuck, how does he know what time it is? You blew my mind, man. I wonder if they can you know, get Dragula. <laughs> if that's all I care about is if they can license that again for the... Well, uh, they- they actually used White Rabbit. They didn't do like a cover slower version. I wanted to hear. Yeah, uh, I want. Yeah, I, hopefully the next trailer we can have hope. But it'll be like a like was that Gears of War? Remember the? Uh, oh, it was um, like, very trendy Mad for World. a while. Mad World. Yes, to do to do a very slow like lone instrument version of of a, of a hit like that. I want the Dragula, the next uh, <laughs> Matrix movie one, to be like that. Dig through the ditches. No, it would be a whole octave up. It would be like a. It would be like a not quite full. No, that's when the children. No, no. I'm doing. The, I'm doing the main baritone. Then Tina, the kids, the kids chorus comes in. <laughs> through the ditches and dead. through the ditches. Yeah, that's that's a separate part of the song. That's the. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to hear um, myself. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. chess, face, PlayStation branding, whatever. Uh, so, Knights of the Old Republic remake. Just stop me if you ca- care about this. Okay, okay. Woo. Clearly cares. It's the only thing I cared about. There you go. Really? Back when Star Wars was a good thing that people cared about. Uh, um, it hurts, man. It hurts. I don't about. disagree <laughs> with Mark's statement. Project Eve, which looked like very. Uh, a lot of comparisons to Devil May Cry, a lot of Bayonetta. Some Devil people May actually Nier. thought it was Bayonetta. Devil May what? Devil May Near? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, very anime influenced. I liked it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it looked, I mean, technically it had a lot of like panache. To me, it's like say. just another example of like, you know, Korea and China like stepping their game up and making Japan look like, you know, feel start to sweat. You know what I mean? Like it could te- technically speaking, like it was pretty impressive. Uh, 
like just you know maybe the gameplay it's hard to tell from what it looked like but i mean i feel like this to me felt like an action version of genshin or something in this in the in the sense that like okay these guys have a shit ton of money and spend a shit ton of time and people on this to make it look insane. You know what I mean? It did feel, yeah. At, at first, I was like, "Wait, why? Why would Japan be sweating?" But actually, I just I think I get what you're logically speaking, like technically. It well, was... I I get what you're saying though. In that these are this is a game that previously Japan only Japan would have done. These are people right, doing right. quote unquote Japanese style games, very much like Genshin is. And you could totally. say like, "Oh, that kind of looks a right. lot like." Zelda and even that one that was um what was that game that was such a hit where I was like wait is this a Pokemon game is it a skateboarding game is it a uh it was from Korea oh, yeah uh I forgot what it's called but it was like basically Fove I was calling v it or whatever uh, it's like um yeah it's basically Korean Pokemon it's like it six great. different genres all in one, in one game and it looked really good and yeah it's like yeah these like wow this is really technically impressive and artistically maybe not doing its own thing entirely, but, but riffing right. on an established Japanese heretofore Japanese done aesthetic or genre but with, with resources. Um, right. Yeah. It was like, is like, you could, you kind of felt like the amount of effort and money that they put into like, you know, somebody's like, uh, like bracelet is like the, the, a, a small Japanese team. You know what I mean? Like it was just like tons <laughs> right. and tons of money being thrown into those, which is cool. I think that's exciting. Yeah. Um, if, if, if the games that come out of it are going to be interesting and unique, I mean, I, I admit when I first saw Genshin, like probably anybody else, I was like, this is such a rip off of breath of the wild. And parts of it are like, okay, there's like inspiration. And then there's like, you like just looked at breath of the wild for hours and, and like drew the same thing, but like, but I, you do play it more and you do realize it goes a lot further and like guess not further like okay 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 we we do, we do, we do another genshin apology uh, no 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 no, no, no. Uh, to, to I mean, over here but but what i mean is it's not it's not actually like breath of the wild at all i mean probably gabe can even uh, yes that. okay yeah okay it's its own <laughs> totally know, okay. original. No, dismiss it. it's very, true very wait, original wait. totally the aesthetic is c- completely no, it's, it's, a gotcha, it's a gotcha game. i don't it's understand not a zelda game it's not you get a zelda it. game dude it's not yeah zelda. and it doesn't look anything like zelda it looks totally like zelda what are you talking about that's not my point are you listening to me all right i'm just saying so, no release date for project eve um a bunch of these things either had no release date or like a little further off uh I'm going to bop around a little bit. Forspoken, uh, there's your, you know, high budget ish. Japanese AAA mm-hmm. game. The last shot in that Forspoken thing where where I think it's a, she like summons a spell and it's this giant thing of water and then she freezes it is amazing. Uh, some really cool tech going on. Um, really good looking like uh, people models. Um yeah, I'm 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 interested in that. Um and they have some uh you know, some good voice acting and stuff, it sounds like. Um that's got some production values. Uh Rainbow Six Extraction, Alan Wake Remastered, uh that's October fifth. Uh so yeah, that's coming to PlayStation for the first time now that Remedy is publishing mm-hmm. with Epic. Um excited about that big time. GTA five, the kiss in the ring uh, here, just um, telling people, I think it, did that get pushed back anyway. Now, March, 2022 it was like a month or something. Yeah. I don't know. Ghostwire Tokyo finally got a uh, real good first, real good look at that. So are you, into, are you into it or what did you think? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know enough to know. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I like that it. It takes place where we live. And so that's kind right. of cool. Uh, but, and I like, you know, I like some of the things I see and some of the things I'm like, I don't, I don't know yet. So like yeah, jury okay. in my brain is still out, but, um, I'm a little tired of Shibuya in games. I mean, it's been like, what is in the world ends with you is in persona. Now it's in this, like, let's go elsewhere. There's other parts of Tokyo, but there's other parts but that's not of the Japan. Thing. I wasn't that excited about it. Well, the game is called Ghostwire Tokyo, so you're kind of limited in that respect. <laughs> it could be the Tokyo ward of a fucking tiny town. Are you, you trying to know? play yourself off as a Tokyoite? <laughs> Come on, you're in Saitama. Ghostwire, no Ghost- Saitama. Ghostwire Saitama is the DLC. You'll hey! <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, Vampire, Blood Hunt, Deathloop, which got came out now to Finally. Like, oh, great Everyone's reviews. Everyone's hyped on that right now, yeah. Uh, the, the Radiohead thing, which... I it, Like... I mean, cool. Radiohead's cool. We all know Radiohead's cool. Is this thing going to be cool? 
<laughs> or is it just like a like a visual visualizer to listen to the music? Or I don't know. Who knows? Uh, so didn't really get much. Like PT is it like similar to PT somehow? I don't I don't understand that reference, but. I'm, yeah, I'm wondering if it's yeah, I don't know, similar in that you it's a very limited environment that you just keep playing over and over again, right, right. or if it's actually like well, yeah. Um, so Uncharted Four: Lost Legacy coming to PC, uh, Wolverine. A lot of people were excited about that. Insomniac doing that. No release date given. Uh, I was surprised that they announced Wolverine and. Spider-Man 2. Yeah. They seem to kind of rob from each other. Uh, I, I and Wolverine agree. is the new surprise thing. And so everybody's talking about Wolverine. Uh, but uh, Spider-Man 2, Venom, I don't know. John, you're the biggest Marvel fan here, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I'm excited for more Spider-Man, but I don't, I don't, it almost feels like a little too soon because they just did Miles Morales. So it's just like, I don't know. I, I would, yeah, I don't know. Well, the funny thing is, too, we don't... Oh, no, actually, they did say 2023 on that. So you do have a little bit of time. And with Wolverine, it was interesting that they said it's not gameplay footage, right? They said it's... uh, That's right. It was just a pure CG teaser thing. So they're just announcing... Contractual obligations or something that they had to, you know, put it out Probably, probably. But, like, I still, like, hey, if you don't even have a date, like, save that for... I don't know. Um, Grand Turismo 7... Pretty good. Released next year. Uh, Ragnarok, God of War, uh, releasing next year. PS4, PS5. Really that was kind of like the big yeah. ender. Had a lot of gameplay they showed of that. People were excited. Uh, yeah, that's your PlayStation Showcase 2021. You know, not bad. It was. Uh, it's interesting that they didn't brand this like another state of play. This was like a, a bigger deal or something, I guess. But it, very it, it well... was basically the 2021 version of the. Remember the thing where they yep. showed all the PS5 yeah, games for the first yeah. time? Yeah. So I think that's like their E3 now. It's like they're like, okay, it's separate from a state of play. It's our once a year showcase thing. So. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, uh, I, 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 a lot of people were like, hey, they like brought out the big guns. And like a lot of them kind of are, I mean, Wolverine was surprised. A lot of them are just big, but they're not surprised. It's like we, you know, we know God of War was coming. We know right, Spider-Man like is going to come. Basically. Yeah, We know Gran Turismo, eh, whatever. Yeah. But like these are still games that sell, you know, yep. ten, 10 or tens of millions of copies. Um so yeah. Uh, yeah, what else? Chia. What cool else in that? What did Chia? Chia? The really Ch- colorful. Ch- Ch- Chia. Uh, oh, was that the little uh, like uh, like rare looking game? Kind of. Yeah, uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of the Disney yeah. movie. I think Moana. Right. Similar. Right. Yeah. That oh yeah, that one. It looked like one game, and then it shifted in the second half of the trailer, and looked more like a uh, look up adventure game or something i think that's the one i'm thinking of right it like started off like oh what is this like it started with the guitar mini game yes it looked very much like the last of us 2 guitar i mean exactly like the last of us 2 (laughs) guitar um cool who's who's making that oh shoot i do you know no not that that indie i think it's indie or if it's not i i i wasn't yeah i wasn't familiar with them but I, I so uh, this was at like two in the morning for us or something or four in the morning. So I what I I woke Five. up and I sort of like played through it at like double speed and then just slowed down for the stuff I was interested in. So I missed some of the stuff. I need to go back and watch some of it a little more because like that didn't look that hot to me. And I said as much, and then everybody's like, "What? It looked great." And then I went back and I was like, "Okay, yeah, it looked better than it looked on double speed." So I need <laughs> to give some of these games another shot. But uh, we talked about the. I think the occasion for you tweeting about it probably. Uh, Tina, as mentioned, was the 20th anniversary of the GameCube launching, right? On uh, uh, September 9th, was it? It was, uh, yeah, it was like September right before, 11th. September 10th or something. It was right before 9 11 um, in, right. in Japan. In America, it was November or something like that. America was November 18th. Yeah. 
It's been interesting. Uh, do we want to remember? I remember that week so well, just because of all the shit that was going on in the world with with the nine eleven stuff. Like I remember, like going to Akihabara at like six in the morning to meet Billy Berghammer, a friend of the show, like who was like waiting in line to get his GameCube. That's right. He got caught here. He got caught in Japan, right, and yeah. couldn't go back because he came here for the launch to buy units, and then all flights were shut down everywhere. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say like, let's do some quick GameCube favorite GameCube memories or GameCube launch memories uh, in honor of the 20th anniversary. Um, so you guys got to Akihabara early. Yeah, I got, got in mine line. the night before because uh, at the time there was like, people just didn't know. Like you could just pre-order stuff from Lawson. Lawson at the time had like the, the game. Oh, players, yeah. And they would just sell them at like 1201 and nobody knew. And so like, <laughs> I just got mine there and I had mine at midnight and like, I mean, I went, I, I brought like it with cheating. me, I remember, like, because the Billy wanted to see it. I, I had, like, my GameCube with me when I went to meet people in line in Akihabara. I, I didn't go to sleep that night. I was up, like, all night playing uh, Luigi's Mansion. And so you just movie. went to go, like, just to see people waiting in line and shit. Uh, well, I mainly went to see him. I think, to go I laugh like at them. Taco was there too. Maybe I have this like it's a long time ago. A friend of ours, uh, Yutaka but, was probably there to cover it for to take maybe, pictures yeah. and stuff and cover it for EGM because, like, yeah. No, oh, just my memories of GameCube are like there are a few kind of high points, but they're not. I, I was surprised because a lot of people this week, uh, you know, are like, "Man, best system ever!" My, I love the GameCube, blah blah blah. And to me, it was like GameCube was like a solid system for like Nintendo fans, but like that was it, kind of right. There wasn't much third party stuff going on. There was a few games, I guess, but it, it was no, kind of like what, yeah. It was like, you know, N64 had like no third party, but had amazing first party. And then GameCube was like, all right, well, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then like Wii was where I feel like Nintendo kind of bounced back. So like, I don't have a lot of amazing GameCube memories. Um, well, you, so yeah, I mean, uh, people, any, any like runner up kind of like run of the litter system, your Dreamcasts, your GameCubes and stuff like are going to get, I think even more of an outpouring of love because people feel like, you know, hey, that thing doesn't get like the the respect it deserves, and it was great. But like, why is it the run to some... the litter? Is it because of PS2 and, and Xbox? You mean, or or just yeah, yes, because mm-hmm. like it, it basically had it's it was like a, the Wii U in that it had its first party games, which were occasionally Amazing. outstanding, yeah. stellar, yeah. unbelievable, and then had some interesting third party uh, like. Capcom weird 5. experimental games but in terms of the like the games that were running the conversation in video games at the time it was very much which i mean some of them time has not been kind to you know some of them are not splinter cell is not like a big deal anymore and it did get sure. a splinter it did get a, a a splinter cell but uh yeah it was not like the hottest it was like there would months would go by without like a big release but if right. you now go back and look at the games that were only on that system oh, yeah. you know you have like not even just the totally obvious ones but like your f-zeros um animal crossing let's not forget in sure. america that was the first place that that showed up there was no n64 sure uh version I mean, um it- wind waker you know which is very much like a you know if you loved it you loved it you really freaking loved yeah, it at time it's, it's been been good to that um uh i mean a lot of people were like were praising the the launch lineup and i wouldn't like luigi's mansion in my estimation was a like pretty big failure as like carrying the mario launch title right uh mantle which is a very Cause, heavy cause huge Game mantle was the first system to not really have a mario launch game in a while yeah. like it, it was after n64 and super nintendo had and it, it it really suffered for it. I think like judged on its own merits, I think Luigi's mansion was fine, but sure. as the like, okay, this is your, what, yep. yeah. What if GameCube launched with Mario sunshine? Well, I don't, the first I don't thing that happens her, but like Mario goes to jail. <laughs> <laughs> but like, let's also remember fantasy star, yo, uh, resident evil four, um, the, fucking Metroid one, prime. Yeah. Like, that's the big one. I was waiting for you to yeah. say that. That game yeah. was amazing. So Metroid Prime, which I was playing for review when we moved to San Francisco. So I had just moved and I had all my boxes and I should be unpacking. And I I wanted to get every missile container. And this was just for review. I didn't have to. And I had to be reviewing other games. It was super busy. But like, I just, I wasn't sleeping, wasn't unpacking. 
I was playing on a couch. I had like my couch and TV was all on boxes and everywhere else in the whole apartment was boxes. It was just going and doing that. And then I'd sleep, go to work and come back and do that and go to sleep. And that was it. And I, I loved it. I was like, I can't believe like, that was a weird feeling having as a reviewer because there was no, at that time too, which is when did that launch? Was that 2003? 2002? Oh, what? 2002. Which game? 2002. Metroid, Metroid Prime. Prime was 2002. The first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Cause that was the, that was the year that I moved. So there's not like, I'm not going on Twitter. I'm not talking about it on Facebook. I'm not like getting right. online and, and like the modern sense of it. And so like people were very skeptical of that game. And I was like, I was like, am I, sometimes you're like, am I just crazy? Like this is unfucking believable. And on EGM, we couldn't talk to the other reviewers and we were right. really militant about it. And so, but I was like, I'm just sitting here listening to the freaking menu music. Like, the studio, yeah. no one has no one has done anything from the studio. And now, 20 years later, I will still listen. That music, that theme is unbelievable. And time has been kind. But doing it at the time, you only have your own instinct to go on. Uh, but, like, yeah, so that is, like, my really strong GameCube memory was also, like, looking at the GameCube. And I did this again with Resident Evil 4. But it's like, what? Like, it's so small in light. And, like, how... Yeah. How is it? How is it doing all of this? And like, even this is so stupid. But even like the little GameCube disc, it's like, yeah. It's but it's smaller than Halo. It's so <laughs> small. How is it really? Like, you know, this is all you need. Like, where is the like extra stuff that it's using that it is pulling out this stuff? Uh, it definitely yeah, had that like clean Dreamcast like vis- video, you know, whatever it was that Dreamcast was doing to make everything feel like clean and crisp, like GameCube was doing that as well. Very super top to bottom, super to nuts, very Nintendo designed. Like we haven't I, talked uh, about two extremely important titles in the GameCube library: Cubivore and what? Super Smash Brothers Melee. Yeah, yeah, and Star Fox Adventures. Which, first, oh. I spent an entire week playing it nonstop during March break in 2002, I guess. I don't know. It's a great game. Fucking loved it. Haters can suck my dick. And second. Did you go ch- like chug whiskey when you walked off camera for like 10 seconds, Tina? And also... Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Carry on. Uh, I just want to say when I got Cubivore. Star Fox I think you were going to talk about Cubivore. I think you were going to no, talk about it was, for a wait, while. It was Smash Brothers no, Melee. Smash Brothers. Star Fox Adventures. Yeah. Oh, and Star Smash Fox Brothers. Adventures was responsible for getting me my very first game. Or my very first job. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. <Wow. laughs> wait, how the hell was Star Sorry. Fox Adventures responsible for getting you your first job? So I had my first like real job was at EB Games and we had Ah. a group interview, which is a very strange experience, but it was my first job interview. So I didn't know any better. And we got told, go pick something off the wall. so lame. They said, go pick something off the wall and then try to sell it to the rest of the group. And I went and I picked like the one game off the wall that I knew something to talk about. And one of the other guys in my group interview basically got me my job because he kept asking me questions. Everyone else just like <laughs> talked for 30 seconds and then lamely were like, and I'm done. And this you guy was must like, have done an amazing job to take Star Fox adventures and sell it. Like that, she that's had her, like a uh, speech mode. experience, Mark, as a 12 year old. Seriously. Did, 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 seriously. Did, you was this so like, did you end with, and uh, Nintendo, by the way, is Japanese for uh, leave, leave it to, it to the, the masters. masters. <laughs> yeah. like, and what about uh, with this game? And they left it to rare, and that's why it's a pile of garbage. He's like, da, da, what da, da, about da, da, with the voice boing. acting? And in the in the Nintendo sixty four, they're just doing little. Burr, 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 burr. I'm like, no man, this is fully voice acted. Whoa, that's awesome! <laughs> right, on. I have a question okay. for Mark. Mark, real quick, remember? I remember back then before we get to Gabe's. Uh, Gabe's been like dying to talk about something on GameCube here, and we're just gonna hold one more minute. Right. Um, you guys picked xbox or gamecube on egm right like so both, pick, both systems way? both systems came out in the city this is a very controversial i don't know if we've talked about this before <laughs> whoa Exclusive. because i have some inside baseball on this so yes so i worked okay. at egm at the time we had uh i'm gonna call it 11 it, it was definitely an odd number so i'll call it uh 11 
staff members and we had a Xbox versus GameCube was the cover and it was like half Xbox, half GameCube. And it was like, okay, most of you could probably only buy one or the other system this fall. So which one should you get? And that was kind of the wrapper for reviewing all the games. And, and we had had all of the, the, um, the, the games for review and that, uh, but the, no, no, nothing was out yet. And so there was no public opinion uh, except for in Japan on GameCube. And it was, uh, six people to five. I voted GameCube, uh, but it was very close, and I was very careful to say, like, the the reason why I chose GameCube is not necessarily the launch lineup, but that was, uh, it was that Nintendo. You kind of know what you're going to get. You have, you know, that you're going to have amazing first party games, whereas with Xbox. I think I even said you have the single best game on either of these systems, which is Halo. Halo. However, yeah. however, if you are looking long term, you probably you. It's a safe bet. Nintendo is going to have great games. I don't know what the fuck Microsoft can do, other than you know they made a they made this really great game. Can you do it? So we were going to press. We were six to five or five to four. I can't remember how many staff members we had, but Sorry. we were. It was GameCube by a nose. Uh-huh. And Dan Shu, t- t- tweet at him, people. Tweet Name at him about names. this, please. The editor in chief of the magazine switched he, his vote and oh, changed it to Xbox. Is Whoa. he allowed to do that? Second. I don't think he should be, but at the time, there was no uh, in- international governing body of these sorts of things. <laughs> uh, I did not mm. think he should be allowed to do that. And uh, yes, uh, wow. you know, you could argue that it made for a much surprising, oh, the new upstart Xbox is actually winning over the, uh, sure. the old established uh, uh, Nintendo thing. But uh, it sounds sensationalist to choose one or the other. And it kind of, it was in a way, but if you looked at, if you read the feature, you'd actually get a very full picture of the merits of both those systems, I think we we actually did do right by by both of them. So yes, yeah, so that's my Xbox versus GameCube <laughs> launch story. Very controversial. Please tweet at Dan Shu and uh, let him know that you <laughs> you're on to his bullshit. Twenty <laughs> almost twenty years, years later. later. <laughs> yes. Okay, Gabe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, oh. the greatest GameCube memory story ever told. No. The GameCube. I wanted to say GameCube daily on the GameCube before the GameCube. Go. I got heckled for buying Star Fox Adventures at the Best Buy by the Best Buy employee. He Yo, that's some decision. bullshit. They should be an impartial source for gaming. <laughs> it wasn't he at probably, his Best Buy. He probably did the right thing. He was trying to stop you from making a mistake, and probably yeah, was- which, which <laughs> like, like it made me antagonistic. So I like hate liked it because I'm like I'll show him I'll like this game. I know it'll be yeah. Great. Did you yeah. did you like it? Did you end up liking it? Was it? Right. It was right. It's not like a like the best game of all time, but like not a stinker. I fully played it. I enjoyed it. I listened to the soundtrack sometimes. It's great. It was fine. I, I didn't it know was a, it was, it was a game. Like uh, the PSO is like that's when I played PSO, the GameCube version. So like yeah, were, lots of yeah. lots of people. And Amazing. one and two was had some good shit, man. Had some good yeah. extra stuff. We. We started playing it. I also famously got into like a huge, huge. I didn't even know Shane, friend of the show, Shane Bettenhausen at the time, but uh, we got into a huge. I had to fight him because he was new and he wanted to give it a ten. And I'm like, "Look, kid, you don't just walk. You don't just walk in here and start throwing out tens like that." And so I had to, I had to like slap, like badger him, and to to make sure that he would defend himself and be like, "No, no, it is worth a 10. And play devil's advocate, and I totally did that. Uh, and but he stuck to his guns, and he uh, wrongly ended up giving it a ten. And the reason is wrong is because you ask. need you need that weirdo GameCube controller with the keys in order yeah, to I had one of those for that game to be worth it. And who the hell has that thing? Nobody, Shane. Nobody. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, except for yeah. Gabe secret and best, me. Secret best thing about the GameCube, just uh, to close this out, is the Game Boy Player, uh, Game Boy Advance Player, whatever it's called. Wow, that's Boy shady Player, as yeah. hell. The best thing oh, about man. this machine is that it can play games secret meant for thing. a different secret machine. 
Dude, those some of those games are Game Boy Advance is an amazing lineup, and being able to play them on a TV is wonderful. That was a cool little thing. Yeah, yeah. that was a cool little thing. Um, all right. Well, uh, oh, Steam turned eighteen too. I didn't realize Steam was that close to GameCube. Wow. I guess uh, that was uh, Half Life Two launch, huh? One. Um, let's see. Anything else in news? We just absolutely do not want to miss. Um. Horizon Forbidden West getting free PS4 to PS5 upgrade. So, <coughs> yeah, but it, like this last one, guys, um, they made sure to clarify. So it sounds like, and this makes sense to me, especially if games are worth 60 bucks, they're going to be 70 bucks. There's added investment has to go into, I mean, this makes sense to me as a person who develops games, but uh, that, hey, yeah, they're going to cost more. And so it makes sense to pay, 10 bucks more if you want to get the uh, upgraded model. Now, if you promised something else previously or whatever, then kind of, yeah, all bets are off. But they're making it very clear that from now on, God of War, Gran Turismo 7, etc. if you do start with the PS4 version, you do have to add 10 bucks, And that's in contrast to Microsoft, who just says, hey, if it's first party, it's all cross by what, what's their word for it? Smart delivery. Um, and game yeah. pass. it just kind of knows pass, yeah. and it knows the, yeah. And it knows, uh, but in terms of generations, like it just knows yeah. which one to go to. It keeps your save. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff, which was like pretty smart. <laughs> Let's give it to Microsoft. Like having that stuff worked out is, uh, is paying dividends. I think now seeing people still accidentally downloading the PS4 version of games, et cetera, right. et cetera. It's just weird that they don't, like, like it's weird that, you know, you PS4 games, you can just buy the PS4. Ver- what is it? How does it work? The PS5 version of the game. Is it buy PS5 and get PS4 free or is it buy PS4 and get the, you get the free upgrade? Yeah. Like $10 is fine, but like what, there are actually some people who want both versions. I don't know. It just feels like they all jumped right. into this without really knowing how it would actually work and how it would go. And so it still needs a little bit of figuring out, but yep. Yep, it's the first, yep, yep, it's the yep. first time something like this happened, right? We haven't had a generation that were like kind of this close. Like it's not as big of a gap as other generations. Did you get the new update, by the way, the PS5? Update? I have not gotten that. Or the, did the Switch firmware, did they just announce it or did it drop? That lets oh, you the Bluetooth. the Bluetooth thing. I think it, I think it dropped. I don't, I don't I know. So. How did that take yeah. so long? How did that take so long? I don't know. That's got to be a licensing thing or something. Right. I, or like a weird. like a permission, like a FCC, like Bluetooth band. Or maybe they have to pay a fee Permission or usage yeah, thing. Something. I don't know. It's weird. But I mean, I'm glad Very it's weird. there. But I don't really care because I don't really use it to begin with. I bought one of those Genki adapters so I can already do it. But then I never use it anyway. So... Uh, in, in Tina news, uh, of interest to the entire Rogers family, uh, moon, (laughs) moon coming to, uh, other systems as hinted previously, uh, (coughs) steam and PS4 and PS5. And the, the PS4 and PS5 announcement was a surprise to the creator himself. Developers, right? He had been like throwing out questions (laughs) on Twitter, like, if I put this out on Steam, is that a good idea? Would you guys buy this? If I put it on Steam, right. should I do it in like all regions first? Or should I hype it first? Or should I just drop? Like he was just straight up asking what would be best, what would be the best thing to do? And then all of a sudden an outlet reports PS4, PS5. And then he tweets like, oh, also this, lol. <laughs> like he didn't know they were going to, he didn't know they were going to go public <laughs> wow. or something. It's very endearing. Hilarious. Yeah. Okay. If you haven't played uh, Moon yeah. and system accessibility was holding you back and you were interested, just do the thing. Do it. Do it. Uh, switch that switch firmware, Lucky 13.0.0. And yes, it is out now. And yes, it does add Bluetooth audio. Some people might say uh, just in time for a certain audio based uh, puzzle game launching uh, early Ooh. next month. Ooh. I don't know. I'm not going to say that we had Zookeeper again, or I'm not going to say that Tetris Effect Connected had something to do with this Bluetooth uh, update happening. Or, (laughs) but I'm not not going to say that either. Isn't that the the real reason they made the OLED switch in the first place? Neither confirmed nor deny. We don't we don't respond to rumors and speculation. I'm Uh, ready to get connected. So PS5 firmware update next week. 
lets you install compatible SSD storage. Yeah. So anybody going to do this? John, you going to do this? Surprisingly, no. Like my PS, I my PS5 is wired. It's really fast to download shit. So I don't. I just delete stuff when I don't need just it. And I pump it and dump it. I never expected to do this. I thought I'd be there on day one begging for more space, but I just delete stuff and re-download, and it's fast. So it's not. Wow as much of an issue uh, they, this is maybe something that they thought out more than i did because i thought for sure they made the hard drive too small and this is not gonna this work. is definitely not an intentional thing where they said oh everybody has you know one megabyte a second maybe uh, that's how they justified it though in the end we're like well you know two or three years from download. now it's not it's gonna be more normal or whatever i don't know they might have been thinking long term they might have been but You'd think they would say that, though, if they because they were kind of caught flat-footed. <laughs> they they that, were like, yeah. uh, uh, how big is Call of Duty? Uh, um, yeah. Are you going to get so, one? So, no. I, I'm, the same, I'm the same way, I'm the same exact way as you. I think we have, like, comparable internet sure, speed. Sure, sure. Um, I say that, I say that. Once the price comes down, once it gets cheap enough, it is a lot easier, you know, just to... I watched a friend of the show, Jeff Gerspin, put his in. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Is, uh, yeah, install, ins- quote unquote, install it. But it's pretty butt ass simple. So um, who knows? Maybe if once it gets, if it's, you know, eventually it's like a hundred bucks or something. I mean, I never yeah. did it with my PS4, uh, but I was a little bit different for better. I mean, for this worse. is very edge case, like uh, idiot who buys too many systems talk now. But but I will say like, I'm starting to kind of want a second PS5 because I have my, I kept my PS4 in my bedroom. Mm. So I have my PS4 in my bedroom and my PS5 in my living room. And now that I'm seeing the load time differences between like games that I play on both, like uh, I won't, I won't mention the game you don't want to hear about anymore again. Um, but uh, like, I'm actually, I didn't say we didn't want to hear about it. It's fine. Henshin, Henshin Slim Jack. Um, but uh, it's like, it's fast. It's so fast. Guys can play with dolls to the... too. I'm not like this oh, old school see, sexist person ignorance. that let, thinks let it, that let it flow. Let the ignorance flow. That only girls can play with dolls and, and dress them up and enjoy that. I think anybody I can. Where's I don't the think doll there's anything. There's no dress up in Genshin. What I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, you can buy all kinds of different dolls. Or maybe get lucky in a in a special doll drops, and then you can get like a special. I think he's talking about special, your game, Gabe. Pokemon a special game. dress for the doll. I don't know if yeah, you have to pay yeah. for it or if you just if that's a gotcha mechanic thing too. But like, the important thing is the dolls load fast, Mark. And so <laughs> yeah. I want a PS5 in my bedroom. <laughs> so I kind of hope that a PS5 Slim comes out, uh, like or something. Oh, new I don't want to buy the same thing again. It's ugly and it's and it's big, but uh, oh, I wouldn't yeah. mind like a nice slim PS5 too. Retire my kind of, or, imagine how pissed like, people will be if they put out another version of a console that they already haven't been able to get. <laughs> well, they already did yeah. upgrade it. Well, upgrade it. They, they, they. You know, there's a new they, version, yeah, out or whatever. Already. They quietly, it's apparently it weighs less too. It's like uh, a little decent bit right, amount or less. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um. Uh. Actually, so something that uh, was rumored that I don't know if we talked about on this podcast, but I thought about it while we were talking about lost judgment, uh, John, and I was curious mm. about what you thought of this. There was a rumor that Nagoshi might. Oh yeah. Leave Sega that somebody was courting him. I forget. It was Netties. like one of the big Chinese. It was, it was a Netties? Netties. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I came out in Bloomberg. Uh, um, okay. So I wonder, let's say that if that, if that happens, like I'm curious your take on how much of a threat is that? Like, do we have any sense of how much direct, influence he has per game these days or is it now that there's a stable of directors whose names people are not like household names but I don't, that are obviously quietly don't know, like nintendo style like actually doing the hard work of right, making right. each yakuza game awesome and because it seems the like they're just hitting on all cylinders now you know no, and, it is. and i don't know how much of it is i know he could take some credit for it but i don't know how much of it is okay he set it up and now if he leaves, those series are still going to be awesome. Or, yeah, you know, I mean, separate from the question of if he leaves, does he take that talent with him? But, right. like, how much of a blow would it be to the Yakuza or the Ryugakotoku Studios, I guess? If I mean, not you know, knowing the inner sense. workings of how they do things there and not having inside yeah. info, it's kind of hard to say. But, I mean, from the outside, here's what we know. Like, Nagoshi, <laughs> since, like, what, Daytona USA has made, like, lots of really, really good games. So, like... He is an established, like, good game yeah, director. He's true. not just, like, a figurehead, you know. He's, like, a really good game designer. And 
you know, he's also Monkey Ball. Okay, speaking of GameCube, Monkey Ball. Monkey Ooh. Ball was great on GameCube. I mean, I got tired of it after like the 75th version, but it was really good back then. It was a fun game <laughs> and it was new and different. Um, but you know, he's uh, you know, he's good and and also he's well respected in the industry and he's well known and he's pretty senior at Sega. And so I don't think like like when Yakuza games have these like because a lot of famous actors are in these games, like big name you know Japanese actors show up, their likenesses is in the game. I do right. think that a lot of that is like Nagoshi, like going to people and being like, Hey, being like, I don't think Kimitaku would have done judgment if it wasn't for Nagoshi. I don't think anybody else there has nobody at Sega has the power to bring a guy like that on board. I think that was Nagoshi, but as you know, like it, teams are not made of one person. So the question sure. though is like, if it is true and he does leave, like if I, it, cause so the rumor that in the Bloomberg story was that he's being courted to, you know, make his own studio and work for right. days or whatever. Uh, if you're going to go make your own studio and you have a bunch of talented guys, you're going to try to recruit them too. Right. So like if the the question is like, if he brings a bunch of people with him, it's bad news, like really bad news. But is that going to happen? Is this even like real? Like, I don't know. It's always a question to me because the, the other side of the coin when this kind of thing rears its head as a possibility. And I'm like, I'm sure he's getting these offers all the time. I mean, you don't make a, a series on the order of success, especially internationally now that those games are enjoying. But in Japan, those games are freaking have been massive for a long time. But you don't get that without getting attention and getting these kind of offers and stuff. But especially now, and yeah, everything is MAs and whatever. Um, he, uh, uh, in particular, when, when this kind of situation happens, if he leaves, Maybe it's a good thing because the people who are there get to move up and they're actually doing interesting things and they're still able to keep those series going well and some fresh ideas come in. Meanwhile, he goes somewhere else and it's almost like like splitting your flower into two right, and then making like, yeah. you know two flowers. It's like, oh, and then he goes somewhere else and is making more new awesome games and there's more of that kind of flavor, good, high quality, very high budget Japanese AAA games for kind of everybody to enjoy. Yeah. I, I, I got know. the sense that he already though was pretty like nurturing of like his younger staff. Like I think, you know, the guys, like he's not the director of the last few games. I think he's already been sort of like letting people sort of do their thing. So I don't know that he's necessarily. Right. That's what I'm kind of wondering. I know you didn't say he was a hindrance, but I mean, I don't think he was a hindrance, but I also don't think necessarily that him leaving would suddenly make everything like, you know, blossom into a, a, like, they're already kind of doing their thing, I feel like. But, but yeah, you might be right about that. Um, I, the big fear for me, I, I mean, I don't want him to leave because I don't, who else at Sega has the clout and sort of the, he's like one of the last old school, you know, like the Kojimas and the Miyamotos and the sort of like, just like long time, you know, right. uh, industry kind of veteran, like who has the, the, the resume to, you know, speak for what his work is. To back you know, it up. Yeah. To back it to up. Back it yeah. up. yeah. So well, there might be those other guys. We, they might be those other guys. We just, well, I guess they're not at Sega at least anyway. I don't because <laughs> like don't well, think so, yeah. what other really like critically and sales popular series are there? There's like one offs, but like yeah, nothing has had like this the kind of success Ryo Gagotoku. Yeah, I don't think Sega can afford had. to lose him, but I also think that his recent successes in the West, especially, probably, possibly, again, this is all rumor, this might not even be true, but like, could have, assuming it is true, and he is flirting with the idea, could have opened his eyes to like, hey, I can do things, you know, on a world level that, you know, on a budget that is just like, beyond, like, right. no one game's budget could be more than Sega makes in a year, you know, if I get the right Chinese company to back me up or whatever, and maybe yeah. that's what's going through his head. I mean, I, I would hate to see him go. Well, also, there was that story that we covered, which is I always anytime we cover, try to cover internal company politics, I'm always sensitive to this because I listen to other podcasts do it about companies where we know the actual politics and they're like, sure, yeah, complete, completely off. So this could be uh, really completely off. But like publicly from the outside, it did seem like recently he kind of got a demotion. Right for calling no, the, no, uh, she did right in front of the Pio Pio guy. Right? Well, not right. because of that, but it was timed soon after that. Uh, sure, it, probably coincidentally, but it was maybe he has had taken on too much or whatever. But like title wise, it maybe seemed he felt like insulted. Yeah. Oh, they actually kind of got a knockdown. And not even insulted, but maybe it was like, well, okay, I've reached the top of how high I'm going to go here. It would right. certainly make sense, like I said, for all kinds of different people to be courting him. So. Anyway, so recently just, re- restructured to some degree too, so it could be just like the politics have changed, and the, you know the people in charge or whatever are not yeah. on. Uh, yeah, who you knows? Never know. But I would, I would hate to see him go. I, I don't think. I, I mean, again, outsider, just 
just looking in, I don't feel like Sega can afford to lose someone like him, but you know, maybe they just, maybe it's beyond, you know, they just don't have a choice. I don't know. I hope he sticks around. Um, last story here. Uh, so switch is getting standard switch is getting a price cut. What was it? Like 20 euros A 40. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, only in Europe, dropped right? to, Two fifty nine in the UK and two ninety nine in Europe, and yeah, and Nintendo uh, clarified to Stephen Totillo, quote unquote, no plans for a price drop in the US, so remaining at two ninety nine at least for the time being, which is uh, kind of weird, you know, it's a little weird. I don't know the you- market over there, so I can't really understand like if this is a big thing or what. I mean, maybe. Maybe it was overpriced to begin with. I don't. I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know that stuff either. And you never know how these decisions are made. But in in general, it seems like yeah. Sometimes there's like some disparity when the price is first announced. I mean, we know that because we're in Japan, so it's always interesting. Like, oh, are they going to do the one hundred yen to the dollar thing, or are they going to like bump it up to the next fifty dollars? You know, or yeah. next hundred next hundred dollars. But normally when it's there, then when it moves officially, it, it moves everywhere, right? It doesn't right. move, like the, the light version drops and then, okay, then the old version drops across the board. So I, I thought it was curious that uh, it was this was only happening uh, in Europe. And I wonder if it's just like, okay, it, or Europe is just doing it faster than the other territories or... It's, it's, it's thing. curious to me that they have the ability to do that free reign to do that, to be like, right, okay, well, right. we're going to do it. Fuck you guys. Uh, we're going to do it. And Maybe then it's everybody else elsewhere, but just not yet. Like they want to clear out stock or something. It could have been like where they're at in their current, like allocation situation was like, it makes sense to do it now here. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Who knows? Yeah. It's like, Oh, that's actually like a big, you know, shipping thing and whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on right now with Google supply chains and whatnot. Speaking of global supply chains, that's the sign. It's time to end the podcast. (laughs) Uh, So let's do that. Um, Let's see, Gabe, why don't you tell the nice people what you tell the nice people when we end the podcast? (laughs) Sure. You can find us on our homepage at 8-4.jp, our second home, giantbomb.com. We also got a thread on Resetera. Leave us five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. And finally, you can reach out to us on Twitter. Hit the show at 84Play. I am on Twitter. Liking them fine notes. Uh, at Gabriel De Leon. Tina, where can they find you? I am Tina Butts with two T's and a Z. John, where are you? John TV. Mark. I am at Mark MacD. Uh, so, yes, thank you, as always, for listening. Um, if you liked the show, please... Tell a friend if you didn't, uh, you know, you keep that to us, yourself. Us what, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely don't post any reviews anywhere publicly. <laughs> you could, you could tweet us and t- tell us, you know, some constructive criticism or what you would like us to do better. Or how Gabe could, could make the show better by his failures and how he failed you. And, um, our producer, you know, it's problem those, all over again, those kind of things. But, um, yes, yeah, speaking of which, so, uh, somebody's going to take us out here and uh, new rule, no talking about uh, death or people dying at the um, end of the end of the podcast, just as a, just as a, a little thing. Otherwise I'd say Norm MacDonald, uh, rest in peace, <laughs> fellow, fellow, fellow MacDonald. I'm a huge Norm MacDonald uh, fan in general. Uh, very sad that he left, uh, but but because we want to leave the show on a high note and want to leave people happy, uh, Gabe. Did you do something I'm, I'm like glad, about I'm death glad last that... time? Or what happened? <laughs> what did I miss? Oh, uh, were you not on that podcast? He wasn't, were no. you not on? Oh, I guess okay. not. Okay, I see. All right, well, I see. it's fine. It's go fine. Back and do his research, and everyone yes, listening yes. can go and watch Turd Ferguson on YouTube. <laughs> yes, watch the Courtney Thorne. What the fuck is her name? Uh, the Conan name. appearance with uh, from Melrose Place. Uh, Courtney no, Thornton Smith not, or something like that, right? Isn't it? No, is that her I'm, name? What did she do on on Conan? No, well, she was the guest on Melrose Place along with Norm Macdonald, and it's oh, like one right. of the That's, most I, famous. It's this unbelievable right. Courtney Thorne Smith, I think. Is yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right? Thorn, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Thorne, you're right. Anyway, uh, so that said. 
who was to take us out. What is leave it to the heavens in, in French or leave it to the masters in French? En japonais, le nom Nintendo veut dire le laisser aux experts. Personnellement, je crois qu'on devrait. Merci. C'est bien, c'est bien. This step is trash. People look at it, at me at this and don't even think I'm cool. This step doesn't get me invited to the clubs. Chicks take one look at this leaf and think that I'm some type of weird murderer.